This is the MIR Mini Sphere 2. They're made in Italy. They come with a USB cable and a little bag. Plus, you can use them with a disposable or a reusable turbine. They require no additional batteries. They run off a power source supplied by the USB cable. They come standard with the Winspiro Pro software, which is free for the life of the machine. Uh, MIR employ their own programmers. Whenever there's new updates regarding guidelines or procedures, a new version of Winspiro Pro is released, and you can download that for free. You can also upgrade the firmware of your device, your MIR device, and it allows you to maintain um, up-to-date machinery throughout the entire life of the machine. To use the disposable turbine, they come individually wrapped in a box of 50. They're not affected by heat, they're not affected by humidity. Uh, they are individually calibrated, so there's no need to calibrate your device. You slot your turbine in and give it a twist and it'll lock into position there. Using the Winspire Pro software is a simple process. Normally we suggest people work from the left to the right hand side with the icons at the top. So if you press the patient button, it opens up a new patient window, at which point you can enter the patient's details here onto the keyboard and give them an ID number or automatically generate a number. Put in the patient's last name, patient's first name, date of birth, birthplace isn't necessary, you select male or female icons with the mouse, select for an ethnic correlation. You can also show additional information about the patient, but that's normally not necessary because it'll be in your patient records. Save that. Once you've saved your patient's information there, you can click on the visit card, which opens up a new window allowing you to enter patient's height and weight. This relates to information that's going to be uh, changed almost every time the patient comes in. Then to perform the first test, you press the FVC button. This opens the pre-FVC window. If you've got a good connection with the device, this button will be green and you're ready to have your patient perform their first manoeuvre. Normally you can ask the patient to place the mouthpiece into their mouth to describe how to perform the manoeuvre so they're used to how it feels in their mouth um, and the device will automatically detect the start of a test. Ensure that your patient doesn't have the pa their hand over the turbine because that will restrict the flow and give you error results. So make sure they're holding it well away from, away from where the air will escape from the turbine. You're happy with that result, you can hit, hit the enter key on the keyboard or use the mouse to press the accept key. This then displays the four most common parameters at the top here, fourth throttle capacity, the actual figure and a percentage against the predicted values selected for that patient, forced expiratory volume in the first second, again these are the actual results against the predicted values for the patient peak flow um, and also FEV1 which is your ratio. You also have a myriad of other parameters here that you can scroll through and a visual interpretation of the manoeuvre quality also of the results. If we'd like to do another test, pre-test for this patient, you press the FVC button once again. We've got the green, green little dot down there so we're ready to go. I 
I didn't do a, an inspiration manoeuvre there, I've just uh, expired. Um, again, you can see you've got test results here from a second test. So I can use those as my predicted values for a pre. I can manually set the best test if I like. Uh, at this point, you could uh, close this patient and perform multiple pre-tests on other patients. Um, give the original patient a bronchodilator and come back after a period of time, 10 to 15 minutes, and produce a post bronchodilation test. To start this, you just hit the post BD button. And then FVC, if we'd like to perform a post FVC maneuver. So the screen has a green color to it. You can't then perform another pre-test on that patient for at least 24 hours. The idea is that the drug needs to exit the patient's body. So if you're ready to perform a test and it's timed out, you just hit the start button once again. Got the green light there. So I've now performed a post manoeuvre and it will give us a comparison from the best pre to our best post. I've only done one post here but this change column gives you an indication of the percentage change between the best pre and the best post. It also gives you a, a uh, interpretation, common interpretation and a conclusion. You can view the results on screen and you can also compare tests uh, if you've got tests that you did six months ago on the same patient it's able to compare those particular tests to tests you've done just now um, giving you the change down here if we go to the print screen you're able to produce an A4 output which can be saved as a PDF file or exported as many other different file types. So this is a, an on-screen representation of what the A4 printout would look at like if you printed it on a colour printer. If you'd like to save that as a PDF file, you'd select the export re reports icon. It's already set to PDF. You can define a location here. Normally people save it onto your hard, file, hard drive. Uh, again, you can select multiple formats. PDF is the most common. So I just hit OK. It's asking if I'd like to print just the one page, which I would. Where would I like to save it? Just save it in the documents here. I can give it a name. Now if I wanted to, I can view that file. And there's the PDF file, which can be saved into any electronic medical record system. The MIR devices working with Minspire Pro are compatible with the market leading uh, electronic medical record systems including medical director and best practice software.